Andy and I have been backpacking for well over a decade, and along the way, we've made a ton of mistakes and seen a lot of people getting into backpacking make those same mistakes. Now it's time to talk about mistakes we always see beginner backpackers make and how to correct them. Let's go. This one's gonna, <laughs> this one, <laughs> this one's gonna piss some people off, but that's okay. I'm gonna call this extremes related to food. And that could be an extreme as in way too little food, meaning I just grab one thing of like mountain house and that's it for my overnight. Or the opposite extreme, where you take the whole kitchen sink, jars of peanut butter, jars of jelly, 10 cook cans, a dozen eggs, bacon, and then you're up till like 10 p.m. at night preparing your little meal that took you like four hours to make. And then in the morning you gotta clean up all the dishes and you're making breakfast and it's just like way too much. Now, you know us, we love cooking and there's a time and place for awesome eating on the trail, but as far as mistakes we always see beginners make is extremes related to food. You gotta find that healthy balance in the middle if it's a backpacking trip. Now car camping, or if you've done it a few times, you know you wanna have some fun cooking, I get it. All right, mistakes I always see beginner backpackers making. The first few have to do with the pack and stuff relating to that. So first, the one thing I always see beginners doing, and I used to do this too, is shoving wet stuff into their pack. And I primarily mean things maybe like tarps or rain flies of their tent, and you shouldn't do that for a few reasons. One, you shouldn't put wet stuff in your pack where there's dry stuff, because then it'll obviously get that stuff wet. Another reason is, especially if you care more about weight, is those rain-soaked flies and stuff actually weigh a lot. So what we do now, and once again, if, if you use something like a single wall tent, this is not gonna matter, but what we'll do is, First off, if, you, if you're waking up with condensation on your wet rain fly or your wet tarp, let's say you're hammock camping, put that in the mesh of your pack or on the outside of your pack. And then when you stop, maybe mid-morning for a break or something, just air it out and dry it out. And it, it can be a pound or two of, of wet water on those items if it's something like a sill, like a sill nylon or sill poly tarp that will really soak up that water. So one, if you do that, you won't have wet stuff getting stuff, dry stuff, wet in your pack. And two, you can significantly lighten your pack weight if you let that stuff dry out. So it's something I always see beginners doing and something you can correct. This one was gonna piss some people off because I'm just gonna say it. Cheap footwear. And I'm gonna talk specifically about combat boots. Now, <laughs> I'm gonna get some hate for this and I get it. You know, a lot of people have served in the different branches of the military and wore combat boots for years and did these massive ruck marches and swear by combat boots. But folks, if you're going backpacking and uh, you think that you're gonna walk into your local surplus store and buy some cheap combat boots and that's gonna solve your issues, you will be sorely mistaken. And I get that there's some awesome new styles of boots out there, lighter weight with better cushioning, whatever. I'm just gonna lump it all in as cheap footwear. Don't cheap out on your footwear. I get it, shoes are really expensive, and they can be hard to find, and not very many options to try on things, but common mistake, you don't, don't be that person at the end of the trip that you're sitting on a log duct tape in your feet because you have so many blisters, you can barely walk the next day. So invest in good footwear. There are a lot of people that wear combat boots. I know, that's right. why I said yeah. it. And they're the ones yeah. that are limping back to the car. Yeah. I always see beginners not utilizing things like pack liners or dry bags or stuff like that. I honestly never used to use them that much, but if you're in the Midwest or the East Coast, you're gonna be dealing with rain. And more importantly, you're gonna be probably dealing with like long durations of rain. Like it can rain for days at a time here. And no matter how waterproofed you think your pack is, even if it's Dyneema, it will probably eventually wet out. And if you don't have your stuff in a pack liner or if you don't have stuff in dry bags, you can get things like your sleeping bag or your down stuff wet. And if it's cold, it's a really bad situation to be in. So 
Use things like a pack liner, use things like dry bags. Pack liner is a lot easier. Just go get a big trash bag, line your pack with it, throw your stuff in it and shove it in the bottom. Or you can be like the anal organized one like I am and get pack liners and put things in different stuff. But I generally don't see a lot of beginners utilizing that stuff and it's, it's super low cost, super low weight and a really ingenious way to keep your stuff dry. This one's funny because I'm just like, we literally do this all the time. But you gotta, you've gotta earn, you've gotta, you've you got gotta, a lot of cutting devices yeah, there. We do this all the time, but once you figure out the purpose and the type of trip where you need these types of things, then it makes sense, like hot tenning, having to process a ton of wood, that type of thing. I will say, we see so many people out there, you can tell it's like, they're brand new, and they're loaded down with like, 10 to 12 pounds of cutting tools. Axes. Axes and hatchets Machete. and machetes. Electric and chainsaw. And electric chainsaws and machetes <laughs> and saws. And we take the chainsaw sometimes. I know, but I'm I'm just saying, at some point during your backpacking career, you will find a purpose on a trip where you need a specific cutting tool criteria. Yeah. But like for those of us in Ohio that are just going to Zaleski for the weekend, yeah. maybe we don't need 12 pounds of yeah. cutting tools. Save weight, save money, and you know, decrease your risk of putting a hatchet through your foot. Yeah, don't do that. Hey, the electric chainsaw is legit though. I, I usually see beginners not necessarily packing their pack in the most like efficient or easiest way. So some easy things you can do, um, one, you, you can, most people will put their quilts or stuff or their stuff that really needs to be compressed at the bottom of their pack. That can kind of help lift the load up on your pack a lot easier. Another thing um, which I, I've gotten a lot better at is just be smart about stuff you need to access easier, putting that in easier accessible locations. So like something like your food bag, for instance, don't bury that in your pack, put it on the top of your pack so you can get to it easier. And this also extends to stuff you keep on the outside of your pack. So things I always keep on the outside of my pack, a water filter so I can easily access that, bug spray. Cause when, you're, when, you're, when you hit a swarm of mosquitoes, you wanna be digging through your pack to get that. Maybe even a headlamp. Things like stakes, things like I want to be able to access easier when I'm putting my tent up. So think about one, what's the best way to pack my pack? Maybe that means putting quilts at the bottom. Maybe that means putting more accessible stuff at the top. And two, think about what needs to be on the outside of your pack so you can access it easily. A lot of this stuff is an evolution and I get that you sometimes have to start big and then you, 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 you narrow down your gear. I get that and then sometimes it's a learn sometimes you got to learn what you need but i will say another consistent thing that we see a lot of people making mistakes on and i'm going to shout out my brother-in-law for this <laughs> way too many clothes yeah yeah <laughs> come on michael many, way too many clothes like okay like you're a beginner you want to have sleep clothes you want to have separate warm clothes you want to have a change of underwear and socks okay like it's still a lot but that's a little bit more justifiable but like, I'm talking like hoodies, three pairs of pants, six pairs of socks, two hats, backup gloves, regular gloves, rain gloves, uh, two pairs of long johns. I mean, just every piece of clothing in their closet. And then shocking, they only wear a quarter of it. I get that you gotta learn what, what makes you comfortable out there and you gotta be, you know, you definitely don't want to be in a situation where you have not enough clothing and like you're cold or something like that. But really when you're going out, lay out all the clothes that you're planning on taking and kind of understand what purpose each each piece of clothing is being potentially used for. And then understand if there's like redundancies in other places so you don't have to take everything. But that's so much weight, so much bulk. And I guarantee you, every one of us has a story about when we first started and all these clothes that we took that we never wore. All right, we're upstairs now. Let's do it. Another thing I see beginners making could be viewed as a mistake, especially if you're weight conscious, is getting a lot of things that are just big and bulky and unnecessary. And that primarily applies to things like cook sets. 
So getting like really large pots and pans or skillets or things you, you probably don't need. Also water filtration devices. So you I mean you can't beat the Sawyer Squeeze. You can get bigger, bulkier filters like Catadyne Hiker Pro, like that kind of stuff. It's probably not needed though. You know, those pieces of equipment have a time and a place, but for most people, you don't need big bulky water filters. You don't need big bulky cook sets. You don't need big bulky shoes. You don't need big bulky packs. You don't need axes. You just, a lot of people like to start out with big bulky stuff and you don't necessarily need it. And you can save a lot of money by maybe getting something lighter. So think about that. Think about, yeah, especially like cook kits, things like that, um, headlamps, knives. You don't need big bulky stuff. You can save a lot of weight and then it's also easier dealing with smaller stuff out there. Another mistake I see people making and I've, I've made this mistake too is <laughs> thinking that they'll be fine with a one person tent if they're just one person. One person tents are like half person tents. Two person tents are basically one person tents. Don't make that mistake. You know, if you're someone that's super minimalist and you can get by with like really little space go with something like a one person tent you will save some weight but honestly 99 percent of people you can get like a, a smaller two person tent like what i have i have a, a nemo hornet 2p that's like a really small two person tent so it's a perfect one person tent but don't make the mistake of thinking that a one person tent is gonna be roomy enough for one person, especially if you're a bigger guy. You know, if you're 6'2", if you're a bigger guy, one person tent probably ain't gonna cut it. There are some on the market that might be good, but don't make the mistake of thinking a one person tent is good to go for most people, because it's not. I recommend if you're starting out, just get a two person tent. That's it. Those are some mistakes we see beginners make. Hopefully you learned from this video. Hopefully you had a good time. We'll see you on the trail. Bye-bye.